And a very good afternoon. Welcome to the Mirandol Wine Estate and the prologue of the 2016 Absa Cape Epic. My name is Jeff Aleph. For the next eight days, human spirit will be on display as 1,200 riders take on the most unspoiled terrain in the Western Cape. The object of today's prologue is to set up starting times for tomorrow's first stage in Tilbach. And over the next week, between 4.30 and quarter past five, we'll be taking an inside look at some of the stories that make up this amazing race. Let's take a look and see how today's prologue played out. Right, I'm standing at the finish with uh, Team Cannondale Factory Racing, uh, Manuel and Enrique. Manuel, uh, you've been here before. Uh, firstly, prologue, how did it go? So, um, yeah, it's my second time uh, riding the Epic, uh, but first time with my Brazilian teammate, Avancini. Uh, and uh, yeah, today was hard. Uh, first prologue, you know, 26 kilometers doesn't sound really long, but it was really intense and we did quite well. We were, we were a bit unlucky. I had a flat front tire. We had to fix it. We lost um, uh, seconds and yeah, but in the end, I don't know, we're at the third position at the moment. I think it's going to be good. Enrique, your first visit to South Africa. Firstly, I have to ask you, what made you want to come out here to race the Absa Cape Epic? Yeah, I always dreaming to be here, and especially uh, when the opportunity to share a ride with Fumich came, I was the, the first to raise the hand, you know, and uh, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, today we had a, a really good first taste of uh, what is still to come. Uh, we had some good legs, some good sensations, just a bit of unlucky, which it can happen to everyone. So still a lot to, to come and we are, we are looking good. Looking at the, the course profile in the, in the next seven days, have you guys set yourself any goals or are you just going to take each day as it comes? I guess survival, you've got to get through without any mechanicals first, but any goals for the team? Yeah, I mean, first, no mechanicals, no mechanical uh, anymore, so we, we had one already, but uh, we're here with a plan, so um, we're not the team for the overall, for the GC, we're more or less cross-country riders, we're going to peak, I think, the so shorter stages, we want to go for a podium or maybe a stage win, and then, uh, yeah, we're looking forward for the, like I said, for the shorter stages and then hopefully we get away with a win or a podium. Best of luck guys and uh, yeah I hope it all goes well out there. The Absa Cape Epic is back and for the 13th time the untamed African mountain bike race will capture the imagination of fans around the world as pros and amateurs alike make their way through South Africa's stunning Western Cape region. The 1200 riders have to tackle 652 kilometers of off-road riding climbing some 15,000 meters in the next eight days. Situated on the doorstep of Cape Town, the Mirandal Wine Estate, with its iconic manor house, is the host location for this year's Absa Cape Epic Prologue. The 2016 race is shaping up to be a thriller as several teams in the world-class field of former world champions and previous Absa Cape Epic winners jockey for the crown previously worn by five-time champion Christoph Sazer, who is no longer a full-time professional racer. 
In the women's race last year's second place Ascenders Health team with Robin de Groot and Jenny Stenerhaag took the win. The South African-Swedish combination had a strong start to the race and with their finishing time of 1 hour 17 minutes and 35 seconds, they are 18.2 seconds ahead of last year's winners, Switzerland's Ariane Kleinans and Dane Annika Langfall of Team Spur Specialized. De Groot and Stenerhaag will be wearing the Sassel women's leaders jerseys on stage one. In the men's race, Team Trek Seller San Marco A with Samuel Iporo and Damiano Ferraro came home in third place. After a strong ride in a time of 1 hour 5 minutes and 44 seconds, the Italian team began their inaugural Absa Cape Epic with a surprise podium. In second place, Team Centurion Vado by Mirandal 2 with Nicola Rohrbach and Matthias Proma had a great start to their first Absa Cape Epic as a team. Finishing in a time of 1 hour, 5 minutes and 36 seconds, the Swiss-German combination put in a promising performance for the upcoming seven stages. But the prologue victory went to one of the race favourites for the overall win, Team Bulls with four-time Absa Cape Epic winner Karl Platt from Germany and his Swiss partner Urs Huber. Looking strong throughout the prologue, Platt and Huber pushed hard and crossed the finish line in a time of 1 hour, 4 minutes and 34 seconds, setting themselves up perfectly for the rest of this year's race. Broad smiles on the faces of the prologue winners. The podium in the men's category with Carl Platt and Usuber of Team Bulls donning the yellow jersey, which they'll wear on stage one. I don't think we expected it um, and obviously a stage win at the Apex is a, a huge thing so yeah we're definitely happy with that. Yeah it was uh, obviously quite a surprise and a good feeling of course. Um, yeah we I thought we were doing well but I wasn't expecting that well so yeah very happy. <laughs> It's uh, quite exciting because uh, we never won a prologue in uh, 13 years and uh, so even, yeah, even after 13 years there is something new. Like I said earlier in the interviews, uh, even if you race uh, for 20 years I think you still can learn something and uh, yeah, to start off with a prologue stage win, it's something very awesome. Yeah, it's really special. Uh, already last year we came second in the prologue, and this year we could we can win it. Um, it's really special because I think the prologue is not the best stage for us, and we could really uh, win already this to, today. Time now for our riders' eye view. Every day the racing is broadcast all over the world, but what we don't get to see is what happens inside the race village. Sarah Haig, our marketing and communications manager, is going to be getting up close and personal with all the riders in the race village every day to uh, give you a peek inside their lives. Let's see what happened yesterday at the registration at the VNA waterfront. Hi and welcome to the Rider's Eye View. I'm Sarah and over the next eight days I will show you exactly what a rider experiences in the race village. But today I'm at the VNA waterfront for rider registration in Cape Town where 1,200 riders, nervous riders, are going to be walking through these doors to pick up their accreditation for the event. Let's go meet them.
Yeah, I'm here with Scott and Stuart, a Scott and Stuart are from Wales. It's Scott's second time riding the Absa Cape Epic, first time in 2006. That was a long time ago. How are you feeling about this year? I want to it's a little bit shorter, but it's going to be just as tough, I imagine. So. Yeah, there, there's more climbing per kilometre than ever before and more single track. Are you looking forward to the single track sections? Yeah, it's kind of what we ride back home. A lot of single track trails in Wales, so it's kind of our normal training ground. I'm looking awesome. forward to it. Cool, and Stuart, it's your first time. How are you feeling? Wrecking it. I think it's going to be really tough. I think the weather is going to be the biggest factor for us. Uh, we haven't, you know, we, we haven't had a dry ride for about four months now. So we've been training in the cold and the snow and the hail and things. So it's going to be tough. We have Hannes here from Denmark and Gael from Belgium. What brought you guys together to, to be in South Africa and ride the Epic together? Uh, actually, there was the university in the Netherlands. We both studied there, the Technical University in Delft. Um, and uh, we met each other at the bike club. And yeah, this was actually a dream of both of us. Yeah. But uh, it seems so far away. We never thought we were register in the first year, but now we're here. And have you had much time to train together at all? No, not at all. <laughs> we were hoping so, and Gail invited me to come to Grand Canaria for training in December. But they just got a new job at Lego in Denmark, so it was very hard to get any day off before now. So we've just bumped into Sabine Spitz at the registration venue, mountain biking legend, three-time Olympic medalist. Welcome to South Africa, welcome to the Absa Cape Epic for the first time. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good and I'm um, really excited to get started. And so, yeah, I'm, um, I'm looking forward to what, what we will expect and uh, you heard so many stuff about the Epic and I, I hope I can get an advantage uh, doing the race uh, to improve my performance for the World Cup season. Yeah, and so like, I'm, I'm looking forward. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2016 Absa Cape Epic! I know for you guys, they say it is eight days of courage. But for the crew who will not sleep for the next days, I think it's next eight days, it's eight days of coffee. So I'm at the bag collection area with Shane Barker and Mike Nixon. Mike, funnily enough, is one of our last lines and has ridden every single Absa Cape Epic since 2004. And he's kindly um, offered to show us exactly what he's received in his bag. Mike, do you mind showing us? Not at all. First of all, I'd like to tell you that over the years, over 12 years, the equipment that's been supplied by the Cape Epic has just got better and better and better. First of all, we got these fantastic Evoc bags, which are, you can use them even beyond the Cape Epic. These things make fantastic bags for traveling around. We got some, some lovely Absa socks here. We've got a lovely cap. Got all the typical stuff that you need. You need sun cream. You need a bit of water bottles here. Fantastic Columbia jackets. Again, we wear these right the way throughout winter, not just on the Cape Epic. It's uh, tremendous stuff. All our numbers, our bike bags, our trackers. I mean, there really is a plethora of kit here that we get to use every year on this, the 13th Absa Cape Epic. Well, that's the riders I view for today. Good luck to all of the riders, and I'll see you tomorrow.
Time for Tech Talk and I'm standing with uh, Oli Munich. He's the gear editor of Bicycling Magazine South Africa. Uh, Oli, the 13th Epsa Cape Epic, you've been around since the beginning, since day one. You've seen the way bicycles have progressed and it's, it's obviously a huge testing ground uh, for these machines. Just tell us what you've seen from the beginning. Yeah, Jeff, it's an absolutely incredible progression. Uh, I was at uh, supporting Xavier Skierpas on his first Epic in 2004. Uh, basically, if I think back, 26 inch, so many guys weren't on tubeless yet. There was even a sheepskin saddle that I spotted, a lot of camelbacks and a lot of aluminium. Nowadays, 29er wheels are like 99.9%. 27.5 might come in more with a, with a more technical route. Tubeless and the, the rubber compounds have really improved. Uh, two water bottle cages in the frames, that's a big thing at the moment. Also, uh, Specialized have really focused a lot on carrying all the tools on your, on your bike. Cannondale have a fantastic system with a lefty, super stiff and reliable. In terms of uh, handlebars is something that's always been funny. We used to run little 580, 580 millimeters and now I'm running a, a carbon C, uh, 7, 740 mil, it's a C6 and uh, no bull bars. There's a, a joke in the pro peloton because Carl Platt still likes to, to ride uh, with his bull bars and they team bull, so it's a bit of a joke in-house. Uh, but geez, you know, I think carbon and the use in the wheels and the frame have really, really been kind of, it's kind of spread throughout the field now. And the weight to strength ratio has also improved a lot. But in my opinion, I would say tubeless tires have really changed the game in, in the sense that it's more reliable. Oli, you mentioned earlier, you spoke about hydration packs. Just give us more detail on that. Yeah, Jeff, uh, when we, in the beginning, uh, 2004, 2005, 6, hydration packs were, were absolutely littered through the field. They're a very important uh, factor for the guys at the back who need that extra time or who spend extra time on the saddle. That bladder really helps uh, for to go the longer time between water points. But something we've really noticed that this hydration pack factor, they've even called it, is that so much of the front end of the field, they've done away with their hydration packs and they've actually become better athletes and I would say this is up to about team 200 but over and above that guys should really be riding um, high volume tires for for better traction and grip and stability and then also I mean having a hydration pack is not a bad thing. Just going back to the technology of the bikes do you foresee any major changes in the future? I think gearing is where it's going and we're going to see a lot of changes in a few days even if I get my timing right. If not a week, uh, we're going to have an announcement coming over the interweb. It's going to blow our minds. There we go. That's Oli Munich, Team GoPro. And if you want to keep uh, a track of uh, Oli and his partner on the Epsa Cape Epic, be sure to check them out on uh, Warza, uh, World of Heroes ZA, uh, on the YouTube channel as well as their Facebook site. Oli, smash it. Thanks, Chuck Kazi. Thank you. The Absa Cape Epic is a bucket list event for many of the amateurs. There's some remarkable stories and some amazing moments that play out on the Epic Energade moment. We're going to be taking a look back at some of those moments that are going to be happening over the next eight days. Let's take a look at today's Epic Energade moment from the prologue. Energade Moments. Energade, the official sports drink supplier to the Absa Cape Epic. Another part of the rider experience at the Absa Cape Epic is the fly-through. What happens is they will sit in a briefing in the evening. They get to see a fly-through of what they can expect on the next day's stage. So let's have a look at the fly-through from today's prologue, as well as throw ahead to what awaits the riders for tomorrow's opening stage in Tilbach.
the next eight days, the race will wind its way from Tilbach to Wellington to Stellenbosch, then back to Mirandol for the grand finale. Tomorrow's stage is 106 kilometers, 2,300 meters of climbing, and our base is gonna be the beautiful Sarensburg Wine Estate in the Valley of Tilbach. It's a beautiful little town that uh, showcases so much Cape Dutch architecture and wonderful heritage, and there are gonna be two main spectator points tomorrow. Spectator point A tomorrow is the very charming uh, Tienus Kroll Wine Estate. Its creditors have been the oldest wine estate in South Africa. There will be wine tasting and wine for sale. Spectator point B tomorrow is the Witzenberg Game Park. And the eagle-eyed spectators will hopefully spot some bird and spot some wildlife. Well, as expected, the prologue of the 2016 Absa Cape Epic fierce competition, fierce wins, taking the win in the women's section, Tima Senders Health, uh, Robin de Groot of South Africa and Jenny Stenehag. In the men's section, very popular winners, Team Bulls, Carl Platt and Urs Huber. Tomorrow, we're going to be uh, taking a trip to stage one and uh, the stage around the beautiful Tilbach Valley area. And we'd uh, invite you to join us from 4.30 tomorrow afternoon as we take a look uh, at what is going to be playing out on on the stage. For Inside 8 Days of Courage, I'm Jeff Ailiff. We look forward to catching up tomorrow.